Hey everybody, this is Keith from the Mercer County Library System. Today I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about Google. In this video, I'll be taking you through the steps to create a Gmail account and then I'll be providing a more detailed overview of the Gmail email platform. Now you may or may not know that aside from being a search engine, Google offers a wide array of apps and products that are accessible from your computer and on your mobile device. And most of these apps and products are free. All you need to access them is a Gmail account. So by signing up for Gmail, you're getting access to not only an email service, but to all those apps and products that Google offers. So for example, one popular product is called Google Docs. Perhaps at home you don't have access to Microsoft Office. Now, Microsoft Office holds the popular word processing software, Microsoft Word. But with a Google account, you can use Google Docs to draft, edit, and format a document just like you do with Microsoft Word. In fact, you could even then transfer that document to Microsoft Word later if you so choose. So that's just one example of all the great apps and products that Google offers to you. Again, most of which are free. So in this video, We'll be creating a Gmail account and then I'll be walking you through the Gmail email platform. Now, as you can see right now on my web browser, I'm on google.com. This is where you'll want to come to set up your Gmail account. So first of all, I'd just like to draw your attention to this upper right hand corner. You'll see Gmail right here. Also a button for signing in. First, I just want to show you this little block right here. If I point at it, it does say Google Apps. Once I click on that, this gives me access to all those apps and products I was referring to earlier. And I can scroll down and you can see there are a number of them. In fact, if I click on more from Google, it gives me access to even more. So later on, once you have your Gmail account set up, this is where you can come to access these other apps and products. I'm just gonna click outside of this to close that. Now, since I'm creating this for the first time, I'm just going to click sign in here. And this might look a little different on your screen, especially if you're doing it for the first time. Now, because I already have an account, it's bringing me to this screen. But let's say I wanted to create a new one. I'm going to come down here and click on use another account. Now, this is the general sign in screen. And beneath the sign in area, you will see a button that says create account. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to select for myself. So now it's just asking me for some general information. So I need to put in my first name, my last name, and I need to create a Gmail username that's attached to at gmail.com. And it says you can use letters, numbers, and periods. So I'm just going to pretend that I'm creating an account here. And then you just need to create a password and then confirm that password. And it does say use eight or more characters with a mix of letters, numbers, and symbols. Now you will need a phone number in order to go any further from this point. Google, along with pretty much every other major email service provider, requires a phone number in order to verify your identity. For example, you might be signing in from an unknown device or you might be trying to retrieve a forgotten password. Now, it doesn't have to be a cell phone. You can use a landline. If you use a landline, an automated message will call your phone number with and provide a code and you will put that code into uh, the screen here to verify your identity. Okay, so remember, you do need a phone number. It can be a cell phone or a landline. Now, after you get that code, you'll just have to answer a few more questions and you'll also have to accept the terms and conditions. Once you've completed those steps, you'll then be taken directly to your brand new Gmail account. And now I'm gonna take you over to the account that I created specifically for this demonstration. And from that email account, I can show you exactly all the bells and whistles that Gmail provides. 
So I'm going to go to the top left of the screen here and click on the back button just to go back to the main Google screen. There we go. Sorry, I had to hit it a few times. So from this screen, I'm going to go back to that sign in button. Now here I am in the sign in screen where it's asking me to put in my email and it will ask me for my password. Now with the Gmail account, you don't have to type in the at gmail.com portion, only the username portion. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in here. And then I'll click next. Now I have to put in my password. And remember with passwords, it's always good to write down your password in a safe place. Nowadays, we've kind of gotten into, into the habit of saving that password in the computer. And then when we go to a different computer to sign into our email, we've forgotten it because we never have to type it in. So it's always a good idea to just write it down somewhere just so you always have access to it in case you need to put it in again. Now I'm going to click next. Once I put in my password, it takes me into my Gmail inbox. Okay, so let's look at uh, what's showing up on the screen here. First of all, this main area here in the, in the middle is our Gmail inbox. This is all of the emails that have been sent to you. Okay, right now I only have a couple because this is a brand new Gmail account. As you can see, there's one from the Google community team. This one you'll probably get yourself. It's just a little welcome email from Google. Above that, I've actually sent an email to this account from a different email address I have, just to give you an idea of how it all looks and how we can open these emails and look at them. Okay. And you'll also notice that these two emails are in this bold font. Okay, the bold font is an indication that this email is not has not been read yet. You haven't opened it yet. Okay, so it's just always there to remind you in case it's in case you're not sure if it's been read or not. Now, a few other things here. You'll notice on the left side here, um, we have a number of what Google calls labels. Okay, you might want to call them folders, but Gmail calls them labels. And above those labels is that big compose button. That's where we go to actually type out a new email. You'll also notice to the left of each of these emails here is this little box, and that's this little selection box. If I click on that, I can select a specific email and then perform a number of actions on that email. You'll notice that once I've clicked that box, all of these options up here in this toolbar show up, and I can use any of those options to perform any number of functions. Okay, and I'll be coming back to that in just a little bit. And I'm just going to click that box again just to deselect it. Over here, there's a, a, a number indicator just showing you how many emails are currently stored in your Gmail account at this time. There's a, there are two left and right arrows. Okay, left is going to go newer and right will go to the older emails. This little keyboard here is uh, called an input tool and you can actually change the language of your emails if you so choose. Um, you would just click on this drop down, you would go to input tools, settings, and then choose your language. And it will either um, show you a virtual keyboard that you can type with your mouse, or it will actually translate everything for you as you type in English. Last but not least is the little gear right here, that's the settings, which I'll come to a little later in the video. And notice at the top right, you have your the first letter of your first name. Okay, that's basically your access to your main Google account. Okay, and that's where you would go. Um, you can manage your Google account and you can also sign out from here. I'm just gonna click on that letter again just to close that. And this menu is still here. Your Google apps are still accessible from your Gmail account. Now, in this case, I only have two emails. So um, if I was to have more, there would be a scroll bar here on the right side, a vertical scroll bar through which I can go up and down through all of my emails. And one more thing to point out from this screen is above our emails, 
we have these three categories, primary, social, and promotions. So when we're using Gmail on a desktop computer or a laptop, um, it's going to automatically categorize those emails by a certain category. And we can kind of change those. You can, you can, um, you can actually turn those off. You can add more, and I'll get into that a little later. But primary is basically where all the most important stuff is going to go. And that's what we're looking at right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up one of these emails to see what we're looking at here. I'm going to open up this one from myself. So I've just give it, given it one click and it opens up directly to the email message. So I look, it tells me here who it's from. Okay, there's the email address it came from. And down here, just the message that was written to me. Okay, now from here, if you choose to reply, you can do that in one of two places. You'll see down below, there's a reply button here. I could also come over here to the right and click on this reply button, and it would do the same thing. I can click on reply, and you'll notice that down below now, it opens up a new text box in which I can type in an email back to the person who sent it to me. So I would just simply type in my email, and then click send, and then it's on its way. Now, the reply and forward buttons that were there a moment ago have just been consolidated into a little drop down menu right here. So, if I click on this arrow next to the reply icon, I still have access to forward. That forward option is also available up here in this menu right here. If I click on this, you also see forward right here. Now, forwarding will just send this exact email that was sent to you to somebody else. So, if you want someone else to see it, um, whether it's one person or multiple people, you could then just forward this and it will show up exactly as it's typed out here and you could just forward it to them. All I would have to do is simply click forward and then fill out this to information. That's to whomever I'm sending it to. I could just put in their email here. If you hit the space bar, it will lock in that one email address and then you can add more. So on and so forth as many as you need. Now, a couple other things to note is whenever you're uh, sending an email, on the right here, you'll see two options, CC and BCC. This stands for carbon copy. Um, what a CC does is if I click on this, it adds another line, a CC line. In fact, let me click on the BCC as well, and you'll see it has both. Now, a carbon copy, this will send that email to more people. Um, but the difference is basically just that they are meant to just be observers to this email, not necessarily the recipients. So maybe you want someone to see that you send an email to somebody else, for example. Now, the BCC stands for blind carbon copy. And that's if you um, want to send it out to a lot of people, but you want to keep their email addresses private. So not everybody can see um, who it was sent to. So a blind carbon copy will send it to whomever you want, but each of those people will not be able to see who else it was sent to. Okay, now um, let me just go back to that menu up there for a second, because there are a few more options you can do with your individual emails. I'm gonna click on more. Now, besides from reply and forward, um, you'll see filter messages like this. Um, this basically just will group all the emails that are in some way related to this email here, whether it's from this, uh, this sender or the subject is similar to other emails. Google is very sophisticated in terms of being able to group those things together. Under that, you'll see uh, print, and that allows you to, of course, print out an email if you so choose. I could add this sender to my contacts list if I want. I can delete this message from here. I could block this sender from sending me any other emails if I need to for any reason. Next, I have report spam. Now, Google, of course, has a very good spam filter built in already, but every so often you might get something that slips through that um, you 
you know, you don't want to get. So you can always just click on report spam, send that to Google, and then they'll do the work of filtering it out for you later on. Uh, phishing, report phishing refers to phishing attempts. This is when you get some sort of bogus email that wants some kind of private information from you. And it's usually pretty easy to tell if it's a, uh, a phishing email. Again, Google's usually pretty good at filtering these out ahead of time anyway. But if you're ever suspicious or a little uncomfortable, just click on report phishing and then Google will take it from there. Show original, this is something that just shows the, uh, the original steps that the email went through before it got to you. Translate message, of course, allows you to translate the email to another language. Download message allows you to download the email to your computer. And then mark as unread will actually, uh, it will just put the uh, email in an unread label. So sometimes you read an email and then you say, you know what, I wanna come back to this later, I don't wanna forget. So Marking something as unread helps you do that because it will show up bold again in your inbox as if you hadn't read it at all. So that way it doesn't get buried and you forget about it later. I'm just gonna click on that little menu icon again to close this menu screen. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my main inbox here and um, take note of these menu options up here because we're gonna see them again in just a few minutes. Now, whenever you want to go back to your main inbox, just be sure you don't want to use the browser back button up here on the top left, because sometimes if you do that, it will take you back to a completely different website that you were at before. You want to stay within your Gmail account. So the back button you want is right here. And you'll see it does say back to inbox. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And here I am back to my inbox. And you'll see draft here. That's because I had started typing a reply. Um, whenever you start to type out an email to send, whether it's a new email or a reply, Google automatically saves those drafts over here under the drafts label. And I'll come back to this in just a few minutes. But again, whenever you start to type something, even if you just put the email addresses in there but don't actually type a message yet, G your Gmail is gonna save it anyway under your draft labels. Now, a couple other things here. Um, first of all, um, you've probably seen this star quite a few times at this point. Um, it's here in the inbox. It was also inside the email message itself. What that star does is basically just allows you to group certain emails together. So if you have a number of emails that you think are important and you just wanna kind of separate them from the rest, I can always just click on this star it will fill in and it will be placed over here under the starred label. So any email with a star next to it will be placed under that label. Now, one thing that's not showing up on my screen right now is something called the important indicator. And this is something that you'll see as you get more and more email sent to your account and you start to use it more. Um, let me come over here to the labels for a second. I'm gonna click on this more drop down, and you'll see this important label. This little icon right here, you may notice um, that as you use your Gmail account, eventually emails are gonna start having this little indicator next to them right by the star. Some will and some won't. Um, Gmail actually is able to, again, figure this out ahead of time. It kind of looks at people that you email quite often and who email you, or it might even look at if an email is address, addressed to you directly, as opposed to something from say a store, a mass email or something. So if Gmail can determine that this is something that's for you specifically, it's gonna flag it as important and it's gonna just indicate that to you automatically here. Now, if you ever wanted to add something to the important label manually that, that Gmail did not flag, you could always put that under the important label. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. Okay. 
So let's go back over here real quick to the inbox to these two emails. Now, as I pointed out before, each email is going to have this little box next to it. And that's how you can work with a specific email or even a number of emails at the same time. Now, once I click in that box, you'll see that I get this toolbar up here and I can perform a number of functions. And I'll come back to this little box in just a second. First of all, there's the archive button. This is gonna put your email behind the scenes. If it's something that you want to keep, but you don't really need right now, you don't want it proud in your inbox, you can click archive and Gmail's just gonna put it in all of your mail behind the scenes. And then you can just search for it later and find it that way. So again, it's for something that you don't need right now, but you think it's important enough that you're gonna need down the road at some point. Here's another report, report spam button right here, if you wanna use that. And here's another option uh, to delete. Here's that mark as unread button again, I'm gonna move over. Now here's snooze, snooze is pretty interesting. Um, this is another way to keep track of the really important emails you need to respond to. So sometimes you might get an important email, but you're busy at the moment or maybe you're out and about and you can't respond to it right away, but you don't want to forget to respond to it later. One thing you can do is click snooze and what it will do is it will actually take that email and take it out of your inbox. It will disappear until a certain time. So let me click on snooze and I'll show you what I mean. So if I click on snooze, I can actually select later today at six, tomorrow, um, any of these options, or come down here and choose a specific date and time. So let's say I know I'm gonna be home. Um, I'm gonna be home tonight at eight o'clock. So I can put in, oops, sorry about that, eight o'clock PM, I can click save. And as you can see, it took that email out of my inbox and then it's gonna resurface at eight o'clock tonight when I, know I'm can, when I know I'll be at my computer and then it will show up fresh in my inbox at the top of the list and then I can respond to it without forgetting about it. So let me click on this box now. Let me move on to the next button. This is add to tasks. This is basically a separate uh, Google app uh, Google Tasks, and this will just send that email to that Tasks app. So again, if it's something that I want to include in my daily tasks or my daily calendar, I can send the email over there to it. Just a copy of that email. Now the next button over is Move To. Click on that for just a second, and let me go over to the next one and click on Labels. Now. These two buttons are actually very similar. The biggest difference is that with the label button, I can label it as whatever I want really. If there's a label that is not, or that is not yet created, I can actually create it right from this screen. So let's say I wanted to create a new label called personal. I could type it in and click create new, and then it will give me a new label that will show up over here on the left. And let me just, click outside of that and go back to it real quick. Now I can also, from either the label button or the move to button, I can move it to one of those other categories that's already there, social updates, forms, or promotions. With the move to, I can also put it in my uh, spam label or in the trash, which is the same thing as deleting the email. And again, I can still create a new label and manage my labels from either of those options. Now let's move over to this little hamburger menu just to see what's in here. Now most of these I've discussed already. The only one I want to focus on here is this one down here that's called mute. And this is a great way to kind of cut down on some of the noise of your inbox. So you may have been in this situation before. Sometimes we get involved with what's called an email thread. You send an email to somebody or to multiple people, they send an email back to you in response and then you email them back and you're back and forth for a while about one specific subject. So sometimes this can get a little distracting because you're constantly getting those emails in your inbox. What you can do is you can actually mute that 
entire thread. So every time you get a new email in response to that thread, you won't get a ding in your inbox and it won't crowd all your new emails. It will just get placed again behind the scenes in all of your mail. All you'd have to do is come over here to your labels, click on the more option, scroll down to all mail, and then you'll find that email thread. And you could always go back to this option here once you're there, and then you'll see unmute, and you can unmute it and bring it back to your normal inbox. Again, just another way to keep your inbox nice and tidy and free of distractions. So now we can finally come over and just discuss these labels very quickly. So I've been coming back and forth to these quite a bit. And as you probably gathered, they're basically ways to organize your various emails. So start is going to hold all the emails that you've placed a star next to. Snooze is going to hold all the emails that you've placed a snooze on. This is your sent box or your out box. And this will show you emails you've sent to other people. Here's your draft labels or excuse me, your drafts label, which will show you all the emails that you've started but haven't actually sent out yet. I'm gonna scroll down here. Here's that important label. So anything that's deemed important will be placed under this label. This one is chats, and this actually refers to this area down here. Gmail actually has embedded in its service a, a chat service so you can actually chat with other people through their email address just like a live chat next is scheduled and this is something that's actually controlled in this compose area so i'm going to click on compose real quick and this is where you go to send a brand new email message so what happens is i could um, fill out my email message here and then down here by the send button, you'll see a little drop down arrow. Let me click on that. And you'll see an option for schedule send. I could click on that. Um, it's telling me I need to specify one recipient. So once I put that recipient in, I could then schedule when I want that email to be sent out. So again, another way to help people keep track of important emails. If there's something, if you have an email that's very important that needs to go out, you can always type it out, but you might not want to send it at 11 o'clock at night because then people might not check it in time. Or it might get buried under other emails by the time that person sees it. So you could always schedule it to be sent at, let's say, 9 o'clock the next morning. So that's just another option, and it will be found under that scheduled label here. The next one down is all mail, and this is just going to bring you to everything that you have. It's going to go through all the categories, your drafts, your, your outbox, everything, and just show you everything in one master list. And again, anything you archive or anything you mute is gonna show up in that all mail label. Next is the spam label. And this is just gonna be everything that, that filtered out via spam. So eventually they will be deleted, um, but it's basically just there so you can kind of keep track and make sure that Google is doing a good job of kicking out all of those things that you don't want. Next down is the trash label. And this is where emails that get deleted will go. So whenever you delete an email, it's not going to be permanently deleted. It's going to be placed in this trash can for 30 days. And then if you, within those 30 days, if you want to take it back out, you can. Otherwise, it will, it will then be automatically deleted permanently. So let me just demonstrate real quick. I'm going to come back over here. So the first thing you need to do to delete an email is to click in that box. And then from here, I could just delete the email itself. Now you'll notice this box over here, the select box, if you had multiple emails, if you click on the box itself here, it would select every single email in your primary inbox here. And then you could just delete them as one batch and, again, and then send them to your trash can. You could also click on the drop down next to that. And for example, you could select all your red emails and delete those and then anything unread will remain. You could delete all the unstarred emails. This is just another option, since those likely are not important, and then just keep only the starred ones. So you have a number of options through which you can delete emails in one giant batch. I'm gonna click on this again to get rid of that menu. 
Now, next over here is the categories. And this refers to the categories that are up here, primary, social, and promotions. And these are just ways that your Gmail filters your emails before they even hit you, your inbox. So anything that's sent from some sort of social network is going to be filtered into the social category. Promotions refers to things like store promotions. Anything of, of that nature will be sent to the promotions category. And But you'll notice that when I click on this categories label drop down, there are a few others like updates and forms. And in a little bit, I'm going to show you how, if you want, you could actually turn those categories off to just have one big inbox. And then last but not least, on the left side here, we come to manage labels. And this is where I can, I can manage existing labels and also create a new label. So for example, I'm going to create a new label. I'm going to click on that. Let's call this personal. And I'll click create. Now on the left side here, let's see if I can find it. There it is. So this was created under drafts. So if I'm reading an email and I want to send it then to that particular label, all I have to do is select the email. Let me just deselect, I'll select it again like this. I'll come up here to that little labels button. I'll get rid of, I'm gonna uncheck updates and click on personal and click apply. And now when I come to that personal label, it shows up here. Okay, there's still a copy of it in the primary inbox, but it's also here. So this is another great way to just organize your emails. If you have a lot of emails that are related to a specific thing, you could always add a label and then move, copy all those emails to that specific label. Now I'm gonna move back up back to the inbox here. And let's just briefly discuss this search box up here. So you'll see in the search box, it says search mail. So I could click in this box and use it just as a general keyword search. So if there's something I'm looking for, something that I know is in an email, I just don't remember who sent it or where it is, I could type it and it will show up. It will show me results related to it, okay? Even drafts, for example. I just typed it in and clicked enter and it showed me all the emails that relate to that keyword search. I'm gonna click the X here to now clear this search. Now, another option is to come over here to this little drop down, And this is how you can actually add parameters to your search if you, if, um, if you really need to get more specific. So for example, if I know who sent it, I could put in their email address right here. I could even put in the subject if I remember it. If I know a few words it has, I could type them here or even doesn't have, I could type those here as well. Now, the one that I've used myself quite often is this date tool here. I could first come over here to the calendar. I could select a specific day. Now, I don't have to know the exact date it was sent. I might know that it was sometime around April 1st. So I could click on that and then I can come over here and say date within. I can say, how about two weeks? So two weeks before and two weeks after. So this way it will show me all the emails with other uh, parameters, okay? And it will show me anything that fell within that particular date range. Now, another thing I can do here is I can come down here and this one's really helpful too. I can click on create filter. And from here, I can actually tell Gmail where to start sending some of these emails from now on. So it says when a message arrives that matches the search and it gives me a number of options. So for example, if I get a lot of emails from a particular family member, I could create a label that has that person's name or just a, a label that says family. I could click here and then choose that label from this list. So now every time I get a new email from that person, it will go directly to that label. So I can just click on it and find it there. Again, just another way to keep your inbox nice and tidy and organized. And then when, when, when you've set up all those options, you would of course click create filter down here. I'm gonna just click on this X to get rid of this search menu.
Okay, now in a minute, I'm gonna talk about the uh, settings, the behind the scenes settings. But one last thing I wanna show you here, and this is an important one, is in this compose function here. So I'm gonna click compose as if I'm drafting a new email. And this is where you can attach something to your email. This is something that people use all the time, especially when they're sending resumes, cover letters, things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pretend I'm sending this to somebody. I'll type in the subject. I'll say resume, Oops, sorry about that. In the, in the message, I'll just type in here's my resume, thank you. Okay, now down here, once I've set up all that, I can come down here and click on this little paper clip and you'll see it says attach files. Now the paper clip is the universal symbol for attaching. So you'll see this in pretty much any other email provider you use. So even if you're using something like Yahoo, Hotmail, something like that, you should see the same paperclip icon and that always means attach. So I'm gonna click on that. And what it does is it opens a window in which I can access all of the stuff on my computer. So I'm gonna come over here, go through my folders, I'm just looking for, let's just say this is my resume right here. I'll click open. And now once I've clicked open, you'll see down here, it says Keith, and this is the name of the file. So it shows you the name of the file that you're sending. If you were to send multiple attachments, which you can do, you would just simply click on this again, select a new file and attach it. And it would show you each and every file that's attached to this email. Once you've attached all the emails and you filled in all the information up here, you would then click send and then voila, the attachment's on its way and that's all it really takes, okay? You, all you need to do is go to compose, click on the paper clip and attach your document from the folders in your computer. Now I'm gonna click on this X up here and just close this draft. Now, one last thing I wanna show you are the Gmail settings. And I'm not gonna walk you through all of them, just a few of the, the ones that I think are, might be useful for you. So back up here on the right, you will see the little gear or cog and that says settings. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna come down here and click on settings from this menu. So you'll see a big settings menu list here and it is organized by these different categories at the top. So I'm just gonna show you again, a few of these things here. We're gonna start under general here. One thing you might wanna look at, I'm gonna scroll down here with the scroll bar and come down to autocorrect. Um, this is something that some people like and some people do not. If you're not familiar with it, autocorrect is something that will automatically fix spelling errors, um, but sometimes it, uh, sometimes it actually puts in the wrong word by accident. It thinks you were typing something else that you actually weren't. So if you wanted to turn that off, all you'd have to do is come to this uh, button here and click on off. Now under autocorrect, there's also two more options here for smart compose and smart compose personalization. Um, it's kind of similar to autocorrect. Gmail nowadays has something built in called Smart Compose and it gives you writing suggestions. So it kind of guesses at what you're going to reply to somebody and it will fill it in for you. Just as it says here, uh, predictive writing. So it might say at the bottom, so when you're replying to somebody at the bottom, you might see something that says thanks or got it, something along those lines. If you don't want that, you could always turn it off as well. Same thing with the personalization. It actually kind of guesses at the, your writing style and bases those that predictive writing on your style. So you can always turn both of these off and then you won't be bothered with any of those suggestions. Okay, and another important one, I'm gonna scroll down again, down here to the desktop notifications. So this is a good one. This is uh, something that will allow Gmail to notify you on your computer when a new email hits your inbox. So let's say you're using the internet or you're typing up a document, you don't have your email open, you will get a little notification in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Well, let me actually close this. 
um, in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you'll get a little notification just saying you got a new email from so and so. You can then click on that notification and then it will launch your uh, Gmail. So the first step though, before you can even uh, change your preferences here, you'll see right here where it says click here to enable desktop notifications for Gmail. You do need to click on that and make sure that your operating system has provided access to Gmail to give you notifications. So once you click on that, it will take you to your system settings for the gmail.com website. And from there, you would just go to notifications and then just make sure it says allow. And then from there, you can then click on new mail notifications on or important. So only important ones uh, will show up as a notification. But either way, you will only get notifications from your primary inbox. So if you get something from, say, a store promotion, you likely will not see that as a notification. I'm going to scroll back up to the very top. I'm going to go to the next category here under labels. Now, this refers to all those labels I was talking about here on the left side. So it has all of the general labels that are already there. It has the categories and then the labels that you've created down here. You can choose to show and hide these, as you can see here. So there's, if there are some that you don't really use a lot and you just want to cut down on some of the uh, stuff that's here, you can always hide something or you can choose to show something that's not showing right now. And you can always change it back and forth as many times as you need to. And last but not least, I'm going to come up to one more category here, and that's the inbox. And the only thing I want to show you under here is that categories option, which I was just talking about a minute ago. So you see here we have these different categories, and these relate to the categories you saw in that inbox. We have primary, social, and promotions. Now, you could always add more categories if you want to, and then Gmail will filter your emails even more, depending on what kind of email it is, and put it into one of those categories. You can also choose to just have one big inbox for everything. Now, the only downside to that is, again, if you turn on your desktop notifications, you will get a notification for every single email that comes to your inbox, whether it's important or whether it's just some kind of promotion or social media update, something like that. So it's, in my opinion, it's good to at least have a couple of these checked off social and promotions just to keep things tidy, keep things organized. And so you're not getting too distracted with all these different notifications. Okay, so that does it for the settings. And really that does it for our discussion of Gmail here. I'm just going to go back and click on inbox just to go back to the main screen for a second. So I hope this walkthrough really got you acquainted with Google, setting up your Google account, and more, even more important, really understanding all the bells and whistles that come with Gmail. So again, now that you have this Gmail account, you have access to a suite of Google products and apps, which some of which I'm going to talk about in further videos. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and take care.